Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the What is SharePoint webinar. My name is Tara Harms and I'm the Director of Training and SharePoint Services for Spinistry. I just wanted to let you all know that after the webinar today, I'll be sending you all the slides from the presentation as well as information and links for upcoming next two webinars in the series. Thank you again for joining us and now I will turn it over to our presenter, Jared Edge, to continue with the webinar. Good morning, everyone. So today we have a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm going to kind of move a little bit quickly through it. Um, but we have some really good content, so kind of hang out with me. I uh, promise we're going to give you some great information here. Um, and uh, even in the following webinars, those will be awesome as well. So just hang out with us for just a little while and we'll make sure it's enjoyable. So today we're going to be talking about uh, what is SharePoint. Uh, my name is Jared Edge. Um, I, I'm with Spindustry, I'm the director of SharePoint services with Spindustry, um, along with Tara, who you just heard from. Um, in the room, we also have our, our president, uh, Steve Fry, who's hanging out with us as well. Um, I'm sure you didn't hear him wave his hand, but he's here. <laughs> um, so I just want to kind of move through some of the material. Um, we have a lot to go through. I do want to um, cover questions as well, but I'm going to ask that you just go ahead and type your questions into the, uh, the GoToWebinar. Um, and what we'll do is at the end, um, after I've gotten through all the material, um, I will go ahead and look at those questions. Tara will read them off to me and I'll, I'll answer as many as we can. Um, the webinar itself will take about an hour to get through. Um, and I know we wanna make sure that we stay to your timeline um, so that some people can just drop off after that. But if you want to stay around for the questions as well, we'll have some time after that, uh, after the hour is up to go through some of those questions. So again, just hang out with us, uh, make yourself comfortable. Hopefully you have lunch because this is a lunch and learn uh, and let's go ahead and get started. So we have, um, today we're going through what is SharePoint. We do have our webinar series um, and really this is, a really good idea from us to for our partners to try to help out with solving everyday problems um, using SharePoint and Office 365. And I know that some of uh, some of the attendees today um, have SharePoint. Uh, some of you have Office 365. Some of you have Office 365, but you're not using the SharePoint piece. Some of you are on-prem. Some of you are in the cloud. I know we have a variety of people here today, um, but I have information for all of you. So just kind of like I said, uh, sit back, hang out. Today is what is about what is SharePoint. We'll go through a lot of material today, but um, in the coming weeks, we have November 15th, we'll be looking at the improving your team's efficiency with Office 365 and SharePoint, which we're gonna go through um, a lot of workflow, Microsoft flow and SharePoint workflow. So definitely uh, register today for that because uh, there's gonna be a lot of deep diving in there. We're gonna give you some good information and really open your eyes to what SharePoint can do for you in Office 365. And then uh, December 13th, we'll be going through SharePoint best practices and why you need them. Do not miss this. Um, this is very important. If you already have SharePoint, but you don't have governance or don't have best practices in place, you wanna look at what we're gonna, you wanna listen to what we're gonna say in that webinar. Um, if you're just starting out SharePoint, don't do anything until you've heard this webinar. <laughs> so this, it's very important information and we think that um, it will really benefit all of our partners. So again, um, we're, we're happy that you're here. Let's go ahead and get started and, and talk about uh, Office 365 and SharePoint. So our goal today is to arrive at an understanding of what is Office 365, what is SharePoint, what SharePoint can do for your organization, and why SharePoint makes sense from a security point of view, IT point of view, and even from a financial point of view. We'll try to point those things out as we go through. To do that, we're gonna use this agenda. We're gonna talk about uh, Office 365 first. We'll give a great overview of that, tie up all the pieces for you so that you understand what's in this Office 365 environment. Why is it called Office 365 versus 17 different product names. Uh, we'll give all that to you. Uh, and then we'll also take a look at what is SharePoint and we'll go through common uses of SharePoint, what problems are solved by SharePoint, give you all of that good information as well. We'll take a quick look. I'll do some demos at the end of the SharePoint environment, the Office 365 environment. And then we want to make sure that we also throughout this entire presentation talk about things that lead to uh, governance as well. So we have a lot of information for you today. So here we go. So let's talk about how we work today. I think it's important to kind of set this up so that we understand how this Office 365 tool and how SharePoint really is really gonna help us um, as we go through our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, life at work. So today's users are a little bit different than the way it was in the past. We have internal users, we have external users, and then we have remote users as well. So this is kind of a, 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 
a modern dynamic for how we do work today in all of our organizations. Even if you're, if you're a small 12 person organization, or if you're a 3,000 3, person organization, you still have these same things. Somebody wants to work from home, or you have partners like a board, uh, or you have board members who are not necessarily employees, but they are someone you need to work with, or you have partners like say Spendistry that you need to work with as well. How do you take care of all these different types of users where before we just said, hey, if they're not internal, they're not getting to our stuff. It, we don't work that way anymore, okay? It's a group effort in everything that we do. We collaborate 50% more than we did just a handful of years ago. 50% more, that's huge. So how do I provide a space where we can actually collaborate and do things together uh, to make sure that we get to the same common goals? So we have a very diverse workforce as well. And, and, and that means that we have people who are just getting out of college, who, who learned how to communicate a completely different way than we learned when we were, you know, for the people who are say, uh, ending or ending their careers or going, going near the retirement age, um, that we're all working together, but we all learned how to work a little bit differently. And now we need to, we need to be able to have a tool set that will allow us to use and leverage everyone's skill sets, everyone's abilities, no matter how diverse we are inside of our workplace. So this is huge. Okay, we are also very agile in today's environment. We want to be able to switch it up on the fly. We want to be able to have a meeting and get this done. We want to be able to move through and, and keep things moving forward. We find that when our employees are engaged, profits are up. And what we need to figure out is how do we keep our employees engaged? How do we give them the right set of tools to be able to stay engaged and get the jobs done? So that, that's where we are. That's, that's how we work today. And that's huge. That's a lot different than what we've been doing in the past. So like things that we do today, we collaborate on files. We collaborate on files all the time, contracts, figuring out what a policy is, tons of different things that we do. It's all still files. Maybe we don't print them out and write on them anymore. Some of us don't, uh, but some of us do. And talking about that diversity in the workforce. Some people like to print out everything they have so they can take a look at it. Some people like to work on it online. And then if I have all those partners that are external, I need them involved in it as well. How do I make all that work if we're just collaborating on files? Sending emails out to, to 10 people with the one file in it doesn't work for us anymore. We need a better way to work. We run meetings, we work on uh, work on, and we manage projects, okay? There's, whether you're a 12 person shop or whether you're a, 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 a 3000 person shop, you have projects that you're working on. To be able to manage those projects or automate pieces inside of that project, these are things that we do and we need some tools that'll help us to do these things. So sending out information to our employees, everyone does it. Either you're sending out a newsletter through an email, that's just a PDF, and we get that out once a week or once a month, or you have an intranet and you're plugging this information into a intranet so they can come and consume it uh, from you. Um, maybe you're trying to make a change and you're in the process of making that change, but regardless of how you're doing it, you still have to let everybody know what event's coming up. We have an event coming up on Friday night, I'm so happy. Uh, I can't win the big prize because I won last year, but you know, it's okay. But we have news that we need to get out to our employees. We have all types of things that we wanna just have them consume. I need a way to do that and do it efficiently and keep us agile and keep us moving forward. So we share ideas and knowledge all the time. There was a day when we had subject matter experts, and some of you still have this, you have a subject matter expert, and when that subject matter expert leaves the company, all of the knowledge that they had leaves the company with them. And we don't, we don't wanna work that way anymore. I need that information shared. I need a, a place to store all of that information, take it out of your brain, put it into our system, so that when you're gone, I can still have searchable content that I can find to answer all the questions that I have. And then I can share that information with anybody who's new coming into the company as well. So we, we communicate, it's what we do. Okay, and we need a platform that's going to allow us to go in, go out and communicate with who we need to communicate with when we need to communicate with them and even in multiple ways. So these are things that we do and it's important. So if we think about our 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 workforce today and, and how we work, keep those things in mind as I go through and explain a little bit about what Office 365 is. Um, just a, a side note here. You may also you may start hearing it being called uh, Microsoft 365 instead of Office 365. And uh, that's a recent uh, kind of change or addition, <laughs> I'm not sure what to call it, uh, that Microsoft did uh, through um, uh, at the last Ignite, which is a, a month or so ago. Um, 
they're calling it Microsoft 365. Now you'll go through months of branding changes and things like that now, where you'll see that it'll you'll see it sometimes as Microsoft 365 and sometimes you'll see it as Office 365. Just for our purposes, it's all the same thing. Okay, um, so let's talk about this Office 365 digital ecosystem. What's involved in it? So we know that we need to be able to work with everyone. We need to be able to communicate with everyone, either internally or around the world. And so how do we do that? So if you if you don't have anything, if you don't have uh, Office 365 or some other type of tool set that you could use for this, what is what are the pieces of the puzzle that you need? Well, you need email. If you have email, you probably need an email server. If you have Exchange server or something like that, then that means you have a lot of maintenance that you have to do. Every time a new version comes out, you've got to upgrade it. Uh, uh, when those uh, uh, security alerts come out, and you've got to do do the um, the incremental updates on those things. So it's a lot of, of work keeping it up to date and making sure that it's managed, okay? Not only do you have that one exchange server, if you have that, then you have to have Active Directory as well. So that's another set of servers. Each one of those servers we're gonna talk about today, they all have licensing that you have for the operating system. They have licensing for the actual software that's on there as well. So Exchange has a has two, two licenses involved plus like a SQL server in the background. So you have, Active Directory so that your people can log into their systems, log into their machines to get to different resources that are available. You also have file shares and those file shares are where you're storing all those documents. Some of you have like two, two different file shares uh, for an individual. You've got the public file share and you've got the personal file share. And although that's good, you're missing out on a lot of functionality that you could have. And because you're missing out on that functionality, what's happening is Tara will go create a, a, a very nice document. She'll say, this is the document we're all gonna go by. She'll put that in the public, public share, but then she'll keep her own little copy over here on her on her desktop, which means we have two versions of that document instead of one, and we're losing the one true source of the document. Then she'll email one out, and instead of going out to the file share to get it, she'll send it from her desktop, and now someone else has made a change to the one in the, on the file share, and she's sending out the wrong copy. So there's you know a, a mixture of documents that are out there now, and when we get to that meeting, everyone's got the wrong version. So those file shares, yes, they store, they do their job, but there's a problem that's just built into them and we need to try to get around that issue. So you have a server for that file share as well. So there's an operating system cost there and then maintenance on that to keep it up to date and secure. You have, uh, if you're dealing with documents, that means you're also uh, using Office 365, or not Office 365, but the Office Suite. You have to have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all those different things to be able to do work in today's world. Uh, either that or some equivalent for that. So you also want to kind of communicate with people. And so you have some type of AOL instant messenger or Facebook messenger or, or uh, uh, the normal Skype, not the Skype for business. So you, you've, you've enlisted some tool to be able to communicate with other people other than through a phone or through email to have meetings online and such. So if you have training materials or videos that you have, you've probably gone to YouTube and put those videos on there. What happens when I want those videos to only be internal? YouTube doesn't serve that purpose. So now you have a cost for something like Vimeo or some of those other um, types of, of tools, or you're just shoving them onto a file share. Okay. Then at some point in time, you have so much data, maybe you have a public website you're gathering information from or internal studies that you're doing, whatever it is. Um, then you have to start doing reporting on all that information. So maybe you have Tableau or maybe you have SQL Server reporting services or some tool out there to allow you to run reports. In addition to that, you probably, that, that private share drive that you have for people, um, you know, that's not enough when they decide, hey, you know, I'd like to go ahead and, and send this document over to a partner. So they go out and get Dropbox or, or the, the uh, free version of OneDrive and they start putting documents in there. And that's bad because it's outside of your, your managed um, organization. They, someone, someone that, that Dropbox account is under someone's name and they put, start putting public or uh, corporate documents under there and now that's not maintainable. It's not manageable by your IT staff. And so there's a problem there as well. So all of these things together kind of make up this, this gigantic set of tools that you need. Office 365 supplies each one of those needs. So instead of Exchange Server on-prem, you would have Exchange in the cloud. So now I'm in the cloud. My email's in the cloud. People don't have to uh, VPN into the environment before they can actually get to um, their email. They can just go to the cloud and get it, go to any browser, anywhere, and grab it. 
Uh, that's awesome. So if you have that, then you're also going to need Azure Active Directory or Windows Azure Active Directory, which is just a way to synchronize between your on-prem um, Active Directory, all your users, and synchronize those up to the cloud for you. So no big deal there. But then you have this wonderful piece that we're going to talk about called SharePoint that can, at its base, replace all of your shared drive needs. So just plugging in SharePoint and starting to use it as basically a shared drive, um, you're, you're still going to gain so much out of that. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. In addition to that, you're also getting things like Flow to help you with workflow. You're getting things like Power Apps to help you with creating like little beautiful mobile apps and forms uh, inside of SharePoint. So you can, it, it's not just that, it's a lot more. So we'll get to some of those things in just a minute. So in addition to that, you might say, okay, well, we still need that way to communicate with people, like have online meetings like this. So I have go-to meeting out there, but you could actually have Skype for business, or you could have Microsoft Teams and do the same thing that we're doing right now. Okay. In addition to that, you say, hey, I want these internal videos. Let's use something like Stream, because that comes with Office 365 as well. And I can have all my internal videos stored inside of there instead. Okay, and then Power BI, a very powerful reporting tool for doing dashboards and creating reports. It's absolutely wonderful. Okay, very easy to use as well. And then OneDrive for Business, where each of your employees, each of your licensed users gets a terabyte of space for their OneDrive to use as their personal drive. And that's pretty cool. In addition to that, there's a lot more things in Office 365 like Yammer. I'm not sure if you'll use Yammer or not. Office 365 Groups, Delve, and even more. There's Forms, there's a, a Staff Hub, which may, may or may not, I heard some rumors about it may or may not go away, I'm not really sure. So there's a lot of different pieces of Office 365. And the really cool thing is you, you can pay for these on a per user per month type of license versus having to have these huge capital expenses to purchase uh, hardware and software for all of these different pieces of the puzzle. So to be able to manage that and stretch that over, over uh, you know, a, a year at a time or a month at a time, to me, for, for small businesses, that just makes sense. For even large businesses to be able to get rid of those capital expenses and have it in a different format, I still think it makes sense there as well. Not to mention that if you start looking at the license cost for just Office, the license cost for just Exchange Server, the license cost for some of the other things that you're doing, and then compare that, make sure you include all of those in there when you're comparing the price of Office 365. Because once you start looking at all the different pieces that are there, Office 365 comes with all of that at a one low price. So that's really, really, really nice. Uh, do you, when you're looking at it, make sure you consider all those things. So that's how Office 365 kind of gives us this toolkit to use that has everything inside of it. And so an, a, an employee would just simply go in the morning, open up uh, office.com, and then they'd see, hey, here's all the things I have access to, all the apps. I have access to Outlook, OneDrive, uh, Word, Excel, all of those in an online version or even on a desktop version. Then I have SharePoint and I have Teams and Yammer and all these different things that are that are here. In addition to that, I can see documents that I've worked on recently, whether they were in my OneDrive or whether they were in a SharePoint site, I can say, hey, if I work on the same document every day, it's right there, easy for me to get to. So there's some very nice things that they built into Office 365 to make it easy for our users to be able to be collaborative and do their, do their job very easily. So in that toolkit, I just have a list here, and this will be in your slide set. Uh, there's a list here of things that are that are available. You can just look at how many things there are. Like Sway, if you're a PowerPoint user, Sway is like PowerPoint on steroids, really nice. Several ways to maintain task uh, forms for creating forms, like say a PTO request form or something like that. Uh, flow for doing workflow. So tons of different things. Planner for doing like simple project management. So there's a lot of different things in this toolkit that are all going to be available for you right off the bat. It simplifies your IT. Your IT doesn't have to worry as much or maintain as many servers and such in the background. Microsoft 365 is moving forward to try to make all of this seamless for their for all the users so that as I'm going from tool to tool, I don't really see a difference between the tools. And that's that's also a nice feature. But it also gives you analytics and insights so that you can go through and make decisions. You can kind of see what's being used more, how much, how many uh, times is a certain page in a, in a website hit. So you get a lot of that insight and, and, and information as well. Not to me, mention like things like security and compliance. So those are all awesome things. So I want to mention one thing that wasn't on any of those slides. And this, I think this is really important for every single organization in the world, whether you're 12 people or whether you're 3,000. And that is Azure Information Rights Management. What this means is 
every, every company, let me put it to you this way, every company has this issue where I go to send an internal document to Terra and I have two Terras that I know, one that's inside the company and one that's outside the company. And as I went to attach the document and then I went to type in Terra's name, it actually came up with the other Terra's name, but I was in a hurry. I didn't see that. I went ahead and hit send. And now this external Terra has this internal document and that is not right. Okay, uh, and that's it. so if I'm trying to avoid those accidental emailings or even out use of outdated documents, like my salespeople have a sales sheet um, that they access every day, but they've been this one person made a copy of their own. They've been using this old, outdated version with with the prior sales um, uh, uh, information on it, the cost and prices and such. And what I'd like to do is when they open up that document, it says, "Hey, this document's outdated. There's a new document that you should actually go and get instead." I want something to help me manage all the information that I have. I need a system and a toolkit that will do that for me. And what if an employee uh, leaves the company and they have this, uh, this no, I said, sorry to say floppy drive, sorry. They have a thumb drive uh, that, that they took with them. And two years after their non-compete is over, they, they're fumbling through all their stuff and they say, oh, what's this, what's this uh, drive that I have? They plug it in and they say, oh, this is all my old customer list. Wow, that's really great. I can start contacting all them again. They won't be able to do that with Azure information, Azure information rights management. They'll try to open that document and they'll say, hey, you're no longer employed here. Sorry, you can't open that. These are everyday issues that are solved automatically by Office 365. This is outstanding. And I think that's something that everyone could benefit from. So those are just Office 365. So to summarize everything up about Office 365 and to move into SharePoint, many tools, Office 365 is basically just many tools in a cloud-based environment. That's awesome. It's a great investment. Jared says so. <laughs> Everything you need for your team to collaborate, that is awesome. It's built for teamwork. That means your teams are gonna be able to get together, do things and drive the company forward. And that's awesome. It's a lower overall cost and definitely a lot less maintenance than what you're doing currently. It is secure and it is agile. That's what Office 365 is. And that's why we bring that to our partners to say, hey, this is something we think you should, you should uh, uh, steer yourself towards. So that's Office 365. I wanna kind of switch gears a little bit and use the, uh, some of the remaining time that I have to talk about um, uh, SharePoint, one piece of Office 365 if you're in the cloud. Now there's a SharePoint on-prem, which is currently on the 2016 version. We'll be moving to the 2019 version next year. Uh, but then there's, there's SharePoint Online, which is part of your Office 365 environment. So no matter where you are, the information that I'm going to give you is, pertains to, to your SharePoint. Okay, SharePoint is outstanding. Um, uh, SharePoint, if, if you ask Microsoft what SharePoint is, they tell you that SharePoint is the business collaboration platform for the enterprise and the internet. And then they say a bunch of other words. And those words are still true. The, it does deliver the best productivity experience. It does cut cost in, uh, with a unified infrastructure. It does all of that. It does rapidly respond, allow you to rapidly respond to business needs. It does all of those things. But in my words, what SharePoint is, is it's just a website because I really want you to have an understanding of what it is. It's just a website. OK, so it's a website, but it's also a cure. What do you mean a cure, Jared? That seems weird. Well, for all those little issues you were having on your shared drives, like when someone has the same file that you want to edit, they have it open and you can't edit it anymore. Things like that get cured automatically in SharePoint. Security, much better in SharePoint than it is on your shared drives. More flexible as well on, on, uh, in SharePoint than it is on your, on your shared drives. But it's also a cure for you having to keep 14 versions of a document just because you're scared someone's going to overwrite your last version. SharePoint will automatically create those versions for you and help you maintain it. So these are absolutely wonderful things. It also solves another problem that people don't think about too much. Well, when I got to the company, the shared drive was already set up and whoever organized it doesn't think the way that I think. They have all the contracts sorted by the customer name. I want them all sorted by year. I can only have it one way in those shared drives. But SharePoint allows you to say, hey, let's create views of that and give us multiple ways to do that. I'm going to demo a little bit of that a little bit later. But it's also an application platform. And that helps us in two ways. One, if you have a group of developers at your organization and they have a backlog of applications they're supposed to build for internal use, 
SharePoint can help decrease that backlog because you can use SharePoint to build things. So it has workflow built in. It allows you to automate business processes and do different things. So I could build an entire training site. I could build an entire HR site. I could build a, an onboarding mechanism. I could build a help desk app. I could do all those things inside of SharePoint and sometimes a lot easier and a lot quicker than I can say building it in .NET and doing all the testing that goes along with that. Absolutely wonderful. So not having to call, there's two sides to that, not having to call the IT department to have, have them build something for me, that's one plus. But the, for the IT department, not having to get all those requests or being able to reduce my backlog, that's also awesome. So it's a way for us to bring our departments together to collaborate, but also to keep them apart and make it secure. It's a way to communicate. It's a way to automate business practices. It's a way to tap into and hold all that business knowledge that you have. Tara is our subject matter expert on, on SharePoint. When she leaves the company, I want everything that she knows still in our system. So it's all searchable and I can get to everything there. And all the people who are coming in can find that information as well. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, It's a way to find what you're looking for when you're looking for it, because the search in SharePoint is incredible and it's even more it's nothing short of amazing those are the words of Jared by the way I'm Jared those are the words of Jared <laughs> okay so what you want your SharePoint to be though is I want you to keep these principles in mind as you go forward in your SharePoint experience whether you're just starting out or whether you have SharePoint right now you want SharePoint to be that one true source of information I don't want there to be three versions of a document out there so that people are bringing the wrong version of that document to, to our, our meeting. I want one version of it. But to be able to provide that for someone, I need to assure them that that version is never going to disappear. I want, I want to have versioning under that to make sure that we can go backwards to, to a document that they changed or to, to the version that they, they want to, it to be. So I want to make sure that we have this one true source of information. And that also means um, I want it to be a one-stop shop. What about onboarding? When someone comes in, how many things do you have to tell them? And how long, what's the, the length of time that they have to continue to ask, how do I do this? Where do I find this? What if all that was just sitting there on SharePoint and it became your one-stop shop? What do you mean by that, Jared? Well, let's say we have, you know, some of our systems are external, like our payroll system is external, it's an ADP or something like that. Well, why can't the link to ADP be right there on SharePoint? So that whenever that employee needs it, we can just say, hey, it's right there on SharePoint. If they can't see it in our wonderful navigation that we provide for them, they can search and it'll find it immediately. So that's what we're looking for. One true source of information in a one-stop shop. What I also want it to be is a very, very secure environment that helps me stay secure. Not that just someone sets security for and says, okay, I hope everybody follows the rules. What I want is that the system itself helps me focus on security and helps me be more secure. That's what SharePoint is. That's what SharePoint could be for you. So that's what we're talking about. Here are some common uses for SharePoint. Like I said, I'm leading up to just a couple of demos to kind of show you. But you may be, uh, let's say you're a 12 person organization. Maybe you don't want to use it as an intranet portal. With 12 people, if you're all sitting in the same room and you just stand up on, over the cubicle and you can yell out the news to someone else, maybe that's good enough for you. Okay. But even a 12 person um, organization, if they're all remote, maybe you wanna start putting some of that information on SharePoint about events and such. So they don't have to continue to ask about it. They can just go to the source, the one true source and find that information. For a 3000 person organization, I don't know how you would operate without an intranet system. I, I don't see it happen. For 700 person organization, 200 person organization, I don't know how you would work without an intranet, a place where people could come to get that information, how you can communicate with the entire business. So intranet portal, top of the list for, for, for things that it could be used for. Document management system. That's what SharePoint was designed to be originally. Here, let's get rid of these shared drives and let's actually store it in a, in a, in a system like, like an internet type system that will allow us to have better storage of the, of the information, uh, better versioning of information, tracking of the information, make it more searchable as well. It's document management. That's what SharePoint does and that's what it does really, really, really well. On top of that, it does things like records management as well. It also does team collaboration. So imagine, I, no, no matter what the size of your organization is, you have projects. And imagine being able to set up a nice little project site. It has a calendar, it has a, a task tracking, it has um, uh, information for uh, for resources or, or the people that are being assigned certain things. It has a calendar inside of it that, that has dates that are coming up that are important to the project, things that we need to meet. It has document storage for all the documents for that project can be stored right there. Those are things that SharePoint can do out of the box. 
And if you don't want to do it there, we have other tools that we can plug in to that from Office 365 to make the experience even better. So collaboration with external users. A lot of you have board sites. So if you're a nonprofit organization, there's a board. Those the board members are normally not internal members. They're external users from, to your company, to your organization. So to be able to um, not have to pay for those additional license because you get 10,000 plus um, uh, external user licenses, which is insane, but also awesome. So I can set up accounts for the board as external user and they can come in and share in the SharePoint experience on the board site that I create for them and manage documents for them. Stop sending out those packages and emails, have that and in sitting inside of a site. That's awesome stuff. Records management, talked a little bit about that, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about it in just a second. Um, but applications as well. So imagine building, like I said earlier, a help desk or facilities maintenance. Who wants to go out and try to find a facilities maintenance application from a third party? SharePoint can do that for you at a fraction of the cost. A, a, an asset management system or a training system just to track who has certifications and when do their certifications come up. So for a, a municipality um, or for uh, for a, uh, 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 EMS uh, uh, services, emergency services, um, being able to make sure that everybody is certified in exactly what they're supposed to be certified in at the right time and track all of that, out of the box, SharePoint can do those things for you. Not to mention that you can you have behind that a, a, a lot of workflow or, or automation of business processes like approval, feedback, or you can do customized processes like doing onboarding uh, uh, workflow. These are all things that are just SharePoint can do them out of the box. Okay, I, awesome stuff. We use it for search also. I want you to just in your head, don't tell your neighbor, but in your head, figure out how many documents you have right now that are in your environment, and then figure out how many more will you have in the next 20 years? What happens if 20 years from now, you wanna find a document that was created four years ago? Woo, you know, I, I have to remember a lot of things. What was the name of that document? Where exactly was it stored? And what if things have changed around since then? Oh my gosh, shared drives are not gonna help me too much on that. Searching in shared drives is not the greatest experience, but, so that what that causes you to do is rely on naming structures as well. And so someone comes in and put, starts putting up a new new uh, naming structure, you're out of business. But what if you could put those things in SharePoint and SharePoint provided a search system that is extremely awesome and that would go out and find these documents for you and then allow you to narrow down the search, kind of like an Amazon search. So when you search for something in Amazon, you get a lot of hits. Then on the side, you can say, oh, I only want the ones that are prime. Oh, I only want the ones that are four star. And you can start narrowing down the results set that comes back. That's the type of search that SharePoint gives you, and that is outstanding. Do you need to help search to be able to search that well? To make it super awesome, yes, you need to go through and do some help uh, help search along. However, out of the box, search is still incredible. Keeping in mind that SharePoint is also a secure environment. Security is at multiple levels, so we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, it allows for best practices, so you can you can uh, adhere to Microsoft best practices, or if you have a different set of best practices, it allows you to be flexible and set up that model the way you want it to be set up. Um, it, it provides things like data loss prevention, which is um, uh, that is someone sending out an email that has a social security number in it, or someone sending out an email that has you know a very important fragile piece of information that you want to keep internal. Um, Azure rights management, like I just talked about, and then uh, also labeling of information as well. So there's some very uh, uh, strong things that uh, SharePoint can do to help you stay secure in your environment. That's outstanding. So before I get to some demos, what are some things that SharePoint solves for us? Okay, so you may have heard of the X drive phenomena, and that is when I, you know, I mentioned this earlier, when I go to do something on a shared drive, but someone else has a, a my Excel document open, so I can't actually get to it to make the change. And now I either have to make a new copy of it and make changes and then replace it or do something weird like that. We can get rid of those problems out of the box. No versioning. We can get rid of those problems out of the box. Um, the, the need for Dropbox or third party storage mechanisms, we can get rid of that out of the box when you when you bring in SharePoint into the picture. And that's huge because Dropbox and all those things may be outside of your governance. OK, and we want to make sure that we stay inside of our governance. Um, uh, remote users who need to synchronize documents um, for offline access. So if you have uh, people who go out to rural areas, uh, either in other countries or, say, farmlands, things like that, um, where maybe an Internet connection is not the best thing that they have. Well, they could have synchronized those documents or you can synchronize certain libraries if you want to down to their to their to their laptop. So that when they go, they have the most recent document 
uh, right at their disposal and don't have to connect online to get that. That's also awesome. Okay, records retention, records re records disposition. That's all important. Some of you have policies like, oh, I need to hold onto this document for seven years from the date that it was last modified, uh, and then at that seven-year period, it needs to be disposed of, or it needs to at least alert us so that we can determine whether that document is still relevant. SharePoint has those things out of the box. That type of functionality could cost you $250,000 if you went to a third party to build an app or to have them either build an application or went and bought one of the ones that's in existence today. I'm just saying, just throwing that out there. Okay, waiting on developers, I talked about that earlier. Um, locating data when you're looking for it, that's all good. Uh, and then just being able to do simple processes on your own, approval, feedback, getting signatures for stuff, disposition, those things are just out of the box gonna be solved by SharePoint. And everything that I've mentioned today is simple, okay, easy enough for a power user to do. Let's just say it that way. And so that your end users can continue to be end users. They don't have to be um, super knowledgeable about the IT aspects of it or what's going on behind the scenes. Your power users can set some things up for them so it makes their job even, even easier. And then your IT department doesn't have to worry about those things because they can pass off some of that to power users, some of that heavy, heavy load. So you're going to reduce the load on your IT department, and that's also awesome. OK, so let me kind of lay it out for you. So let's say you said, Jared, you talked to us so well today and we really like what you said about this SharePoint thing. So we're going to invest in SharePoint. So now you've purchased SharePoint inside of it. You've gone through and you decided that you needed to, a, a, a configuration in there that, that met your needs, not the way Microsoft says it or not the way company A did it or company B did it, but the way you need it to be. It can be unique for you. So you set up an intranet and we did a site collection as that, you don't need to worry about that term. We set up a, a projects site for you and we set up an HR site for you. And then you had a finance site and some other ones. And what you did here was allow yourself to silo those departments into their own little, little segment. So that HR's documents are HR's documents, finance's documents are finance's documents. And they can stay secure and separate it from the rest of the world. You also created an intranet so that if HR wants to um, uh, set out there like the new employee policy or the employee handbook, they can put that up on the intranet so people will have access to it as well. But then you said, hey, projects, you know, we're going to have multiple projects. We're just going to shove a, a, a set up a nice little subsite under each uh, under our project site for each project that we do. That's just awesome because what's that project site going to have in it? Like project tracking, you know, a calendar and all those things we talked about before. And I can have a place where we do all, we set up all of our projects and we have some governance around how those projects are, are set up and how their, um, how their documents are managed and how long those documents stay around, all those good things. HR might have some additional sites they need. Maybe they have an HR manager's site or an employee slash manager's site that they have to create as well to allow employees to see their uh, managers to see their employees uh, uh, like uh, uh, profiles or or reviews and things like that. So I got all that set up. Now what? Right out of the box, you now have document management. What does that mean? When you put a document inside of one of our document libraries, we have the ability to have it versioned. Uh, we have the ability to, to add additional information to that document. So metadata uh, to that document. So additional columns. Like, for example, if I have a, a, a folder on my shared drive that has a thousand contracts in it and I need to go find out all the contracts that were so signed by Steve because we need to review all those. <laughs> uh, Steve's looking at me. Uh, so how do I do that? I mean, I could do a search for the word Steve, but it's gonna find a lot of stuff inside of there. And some of those might be like scanned documents as well, like the final version with a signature on it might be a PDF that was scanned and, that's, and it's not OCR capable. So it's not gonna find those different things. But in SharePoint, I could say, not only am I depositing the document or the contract in here, but now I have columns that go along with that, which one of the columns might be who signed it, what date was it signed? When does the contract expire? Um, what department is responsible for this? And those types of things. And now that metadata is all searchable. I can say, hey, let me go find all the ones that Steve signed and it's gonna find them all. In addition to that, I could just create a view of that so I could always be able to see it and not have to even do a search. Awesome stuff. It gives us the ability to create views, which I'm gonna demo, demo for you. Uh, it gives us the ability to have content types for data classification. So I can determine what's a contract or what's a policy or what's a, a HR document and what's a finance document. That's what we wanna do, classify our documents so that search can help you narrow down things like designated as prime and such. Um, and then manage metadata for consistency. So being able to take keywords that we use all the time and standardize those so we're using the same keywords all the time or giving um, aliases to common names like information technology 
That's what we, we call them here, but we also refer to them as ITS or information technology services or just IT or help desk. I want to make sure that when someone enters in any of those words that all the other uh, aliases for that are also searched or also considered. So managed metadata for consistency. That's a cool thing. All that's part of and security. All that's part of document management. So you get that out of the box. Then you decide, I want to start doing some records management. So now you have a, a system that's going to provide records management for you as well so that you can, you can hold onto that document for seven years or five years or get rid of that document out of 13, after 13 months. You know, I find that there's two categories, people who need to get rid of a document as fast as possible and people who need to hold on to a document as long as possible. So either one of those scenarios is good for you. Rather than going to get a third party $250,000 uh, 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 product, to do the same thing that SharePoint can do. So that's that's outstanding, okay? Then if you're doing those types of things in records management, you're probably also worried about compliance. So making sure that we don't lose data, making sure that we are, um, uh, if, if there's any litigation, we can put records on hold and do all those types of things. That's part of records management, but also part of compliance. And then security, like I talked about earlier. And then you want your teams to be able to collaborate. So I've got all this stuff. So those project sites are really collaboration sites where people come together and work on a project to create a final product. And then we use that final product. So for those who, are, who have been hearing a lot of things about, well, should we be in Teams to do collaboration or should we be in SharePoint to do collaboration? I'm gonna put it to you this way. It's not SharePoint or Teams, it's SharePoint and Teams together. Okay, and I'm going to demo how you can actually make that work for yourselves um, and uh, I'll, I'll give that demo in just a second. We'll talk more about it then. Okay, and then like I talked about earlier, application development as well. So I have all these different pieces that SharePoint provides for me. Just I installed it, all this stuff came with it and I can utilize it. Do you have to utilize it all on day one? No, but all of it will be available for you. So as you grow, SharePoint will grow with you. And so will Office 365. All right. <laughs> In order to make sure all this works out for you the best, a successful SharePoint experience begins with governance. We are very adamant about the fact that our clients should have governance. We wanna make sure that they are, are have best practices um, uh, in place. Um, and governance makes sure that, that we have a plan around how we're gonna use our SharePoint, how we're gonna grow our SharePoint, how we're gonna make our SharePoint better, when we're gonna make our SharePoint better, um, what's legal inside of our SharePoint and what's not legal inside of our SharePoint. So governance is very, very huge. It's very, very important. And we'll talk more about that. Governance stops your SharePoint from becoming a beast. It stops, it, uh, stops you from having unhappy end users. I can't use this tool. I don't know how to do it. No one trained me on how to do it, those things. We want to make sure that doesn't happen. It also helps with IT overload. We don't want that to happen either. And then also helps with unacceptable performance. All those things would actually be very bad for you. So some things that SharePoint helps you with, okay? Governance, it's important. Make sure you have a governance plan. If you don't know how to do that, then contact us so we can help you with that. We don't, we don't have a, a governance um, uh, uh, webinar planned, but we do have a best practices plan and we're going to talk about governance inside of there. Um, so we'll give you some details about best practices and why you need governance inside of there and that best practices. Sign up for that today. It's very, very important. Training. One of the things you have to do when you have that governance, it's going to say, hey, train our users. There's different levels of training that you're going to do. You're going to train your admin people to make sure they understand how to keep SharePoint running and keep Office 365 up and running. Um, you're going to train your power users. The most important set of people you'll train is the power users. So they can do all the, the task of creating libraries, creating lists, creating a new site, setting up things for people, making sure things work properly. They don't have to be IT. They can just be regular power users. And uh, we, we usually say have it as someone who's in that department who understands that department's needs. <clears throat> that makes a good a good site steward. And then the last uh, set of people you'll train is end users as well. And you don't have to send them to a, a three week class of, of training stretch it out over a period of time do a little lunch and learns like we're doing right now for your end users to show them better ways to drag it or to add a document to a library better ways to fill in metadata better ways to navigate through the site just to keep them up to date and keep them fresh to get rid of their anxiety um, and so if you lay all that out you're gonna have a smooth transition into your sharepoint 
So you're, you're looking at me, you're not really looking at me, but you're looking at the screen, which is actually looking at me. And you're thinking, well, Jared, we're not on SharePoint, but I have all this data sitting out here. And how do I get all that data into this, into this SharePoint environment? Or you're saying, well, Jared, we didn't follow those governance rules. And we kind of, we didn't really set up SharePoint right the first time. So how do we get it back to a better, better place, a better way to, to work with it? Well, migration is part of everyday life. We need to move things from one place to another place. We have very good um, uh, uh, migration tools. It's very possible to do. Um, uh, we have partners that have some tools as well that we could certainly introduce you to if, you ne if necessary. But I want you to consider this. Do not just take everything you had in your share, your share drive and grab it and move it and dump it into SharePoint. That's a bad move because you just took documents that may have bad hygiene and you move them over into SharePoint, a better system, but you're still going to have documents with bad hygiene. So what we want to make sure you're doing is that as you're moving it, there's a plan for that move, that you are strategically moving it, that we're adding content types and metadata inside of there as we do the move. And so not there's tons of migration software out there that'll help you do some of these things. Microsoft has some. Um, we have some that we prefer. If you need information on that, if you're going through that trial, just contact us, let us know, and we can we can uh, give you some, some of our knowledge on that and help you out. Okay. We also want to tell you, don't be afraid to customize your SharePoint. You're, you are encouraged to customize your SharePoint. Think of it from the, from the lowest amount. If you want to keep a list of products, Microsoft doesn't have a list out there for products. It would be a custom list that you create and you would determine what the columns need to be, whether you wanted the product name, the price or a SKU number or whatever it is. Right. So you're encouraged from the beginning to customize your SharePoint. We just want to make sure that you're you're doing it creatively, that you're doing the right thing, whether that means you want to brand your site as well, because you, you think, well, we had an internet before and we want our current internet, our new internet to look very similar, same colors, same, same features. Maybe you need to, to customize it for that. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you have to customize, you want to customize, do it. What we recommend is look for as much out of the box as you can get. And then when out of the box just doesn't do, do not be afraid to go and customize it. Okay. And then we also want to tell you that third parties can be awesome. Okay. So let's say that you took me up on the offer and you said, hey, I want to go and build this HR site inside of here. Well, before you go through and start planning out how to build that HR site, and before you go through and dedicate a certain number of hours to build it, or before you engage someone else to do it, maybe consider looking for something that has pre-built templates for HR. The community is huge. There are a lot of builders out there that have built pieces that will run on SharePoint. So like HRIS systems, help desk systems, and those types of things. If you can't find another partner, we have partners that we use. Um, even in, internally, we use them and we give them to our, our uh, clients as well. We talk to our clients about them as well. Um, but those systems are already out there created. So don't recreate the wheel. You can actually go and purchase something that will run on SharePoint. The beauty of that, unlike purchasing a third-party program that runs outside of SharePoint, the beauty is it's built on SharePoint, which means it's still customizable for you. You can continue to customize it after the fact once you get it in there. And that is outstanding. It's awesome. You can make it work for you. So those are some things that, that SharePoint offers. Okay, And I want to jump into some demos real quick. Um, so let's go ahead and get out of this. All right. So here I have just a simple SharePoint site. Um, to build what you see in front of you, it took me about 30 minutes. I created the site and I added a few things on it. I added that image on the top. I added some news articles and I added some upcoming events. So I just built an effective intranet site in 30 minutes. Okay. Now that's because I know how to do stuff. So I'm, I'm used to it. I, you know, I've gone and I've done it before like 150 times. So I know how to do it and I knew which buttons to click and what to do right away. I'm telling you that a power user that was trained could also do those things in a limited amount of time. OK, so when, when would I customize this, though? So if if this look and feel wasn't good for me, the out of the box look and feel and you think I just need more, then then you get into customizing. But maybe the out of the box works for you. And that's what we're, what we're trying to say to you. OK, so it's a very beautiful site. It's pretty, pretty simple. A person goes and says, oh, yeah, here's some news here. Let me click on that news article and it opens up. Another page with another image on top of it. And here's some information inside that page for my user. That's very slick, very easy. So it's very similar. The, the, the new and modern UI for, for SharePoint is very similar to like 
working with a blog. So if you're a blogger, you kind of get get the uh, the familiar scenes uh, uh, scene to that. You create a new news article, it just becomes a page that's there. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, but let me just show you a little bit more of what I have here. So I also uh, wanted to just go and create a, a uh, project site. So I created this project home site. And again, to create all this, maybe it took me an hour, but in real life, if I was gonna do it, I'd do a lot more inside of here. So it might take me, say, a couple of days to really make it refined. But even a couple of days versus waiting for my developers to go and create this over a six month period of time, that is huge, it's mind blowing, right? And so on here, I just have some simple things like the status of some of the projects we have running. I've got two that are off track. I've got five that are on track. So we're looking good there. It's a little animated. Um, I've got some links to uh, current projects that are running that I think are important. So I have those up here. And I have just a, a thing here for activity, different things that have been going on. Uh, and I could put documents up here or tasks and all those things if I wanted to, but I have a lower level site for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here on this project that I have that's running. This is our Spin23 intranet project. This is where I go in and actually uh, do all the, the work for the, I assign tasks and do different things like that. And I've gone and I spent a, spent a little bit of time on this site. I have it in the classic UI look. So you'll see the difference between that modern UI you just saw a second ago and then this classic UI that's about to show up. There it is. On this classic UI interface here, I have some things like this project summary. You can see that it's giving me upcoming events that are happening, and then it's going to switch back to a timeline. I see how long phase two is supposed to run and when phase three is supposed to run, some milestones that we have set up. I see some tasks that I wanted to highlight on the, on the uh, project summary just so I know those are coming up. That's everything a project manager needs. Right. In addition to that, we have some project documents that we want to look at. And I want to talk about this document library so I can show you a couple of things that I pointed out as we were going through some of the slides. OK, and then over here, I have a list of my tasks. So if Tara went to this page, she would see her task, not mine. I'm on the page. I see my task, not hers. I think that's beautiful. I think that's a really cool thing to be able to do. And I also have them separated by here are the phase two task and here are the phase three task. Um, if you're familiar with Gantt charts and things like that, I also have views of this as Gantt charts. And so you can take a look at all those different things as you, or you can look at it any way you want to see the data. That's one of the beauties of it. So let me talk about like these documents over here that I have. Let me go ahead and click on this and just drill down into the documents. And I just want to show you that initially I have like six or seven documents here. So I have six documents here. Um, and instead of just like your shared drive, just being able to put these into a folder, I have them into what's called a library. And in this library, I have uh, additional columns that I have applied to all of the documents. So I have a column for responsible party or responsible department. I have a column for uh, whether the document needs approval or not. And then I have some other things that SharePoint provides automatically, like the last time it was modified and who it was last modified by. It also keeps track of things like, um, like who uh, created the document. Um, and and uh, when it was created. And you can see that just by hovering over that person's name, I get a lot of feedback here, which is also cool. That's an awesome phone number I have. I didn't know I had that one. <laughs> okay. And then some files that I've recently worked on as well. This is just amazing, right? Lots of information. These are things that are just sitting here inside of the modern, modern uh, implementation or modern, modern UI. But here's what I want to show you. So out of the box, if I only had this one view, there's still some really cool features here that a user could use. Most of your users are familiar with like forms or tables inside of Excel. So they could go in here and just click here on the drop down and say, oh, I want to make these ascending or descending or I want to filter it. Or I just want to go and get, you know, the the uh, the the items that are from marketing so they can filter by whatever they want. And that's pretty cool. But rather than have my end user have to do that, I as a site steward thought about my users and said, oh, I know some of these are going to want to see it broken down by who, what department is responsible. And some of these are going to want to know which ones are approved or not or, or uh, need approval or not. So I created multiple views of these and I'll go down and click on my department view here. And now I have it all formatted by uh, or grouped by the department. So here's the items for the IT department and they can drill into that and see here's the two documents that are for IT and here's the ones for marketing. So I was just able to add a, a multiple view, one set of documents, multiple views on it. That's what we're looking for. I have another view here for the, uh, there it is, requires approval. Okay, so you only see the two documents that require approval inside of here. So imagine having thousands of documents in here and being able to say, hey, I'd only like to see these specific ones. That is awesome. In addition to that, you can also search for the document. So I could search in here. Let's see if this works. So I'll search for transfer. It found it right there. 
And so it goes through and says, here's the results for that transfer document. Absolutely outstanding. So all of that is out of the box features. Everything I've shown you inside this SharePoint is out of the box features. I didn't do anything else to it. Okay, so let me just, since I have a little bit of extra time, I'm gonna go here and click on the uh, tasks and just show you that real quick. Okay, so I have all these tasks inside of here, but there, it gives me the timeline on top of it, but I see all these tasks and there are multiple views of this as well. I could look at this in a calendar view if I wanted to, just by clicking on here, calendar. And now I see all of those different things sitting here on my calendar, which is absolutely awesome. Okay, I can also see other views that I have for it. Okay, I have a completed, which none of them are completed, so that wouldn't be anything. Uh, tasks that are late, my task, upcoming tasks. So I can see all the different things, like I'll go to the my task one again, and it'll show it to me. And these are all ones that are assigned to Jared Edge. So very, very nice. Like I said, all of this was out of the block box. is very, very easy to use. Now, does that mean because I say it's so easy that you're not going to have to train? No, you're going to have to train some people. You don't want to hand over this huge, huge set of, of, of tools and then no one knows what to do with them. Am I saying you can just put it out there and you don't need governance? I'm definitely not saying that. I'm saying, yes, it's easy to use, but because it's easy to use, you need governance. You need to decide. How, how are projects gonna be handled? When are we gonna use Microsoft Teams? When are we gonna use SharePoint for that? When are we gonna um, uh, uh, you know, use uh, uh, Microsoft Forms? When are we gonna use these different pieces and how should they be used? When is it acceptable? So let's go take a look at Teams. So I mentioned that there's this always, there's always a debate out there. And one of the debates is, should I be doing like project tracking inside of SharePoint or should I do project tracking and collaboration inside of Teams? And I, I would tell you again, it's not one or the other, it's both. And so here I have uh, Microsoft Teams. Let me just go ahead and enlarge that. Okay, Microsoft Teams is a way for me to do many things. One of the things I can do with it is have like meetings with different people in, in, uh, inside of this environment here. So I could go to my back to my channel, go to conversations, and I could go in here. And if Tara was online, I could just go down here and say, hey, let's meet Tara, send her an instant message. And then I could click right here and just say, hey, let's go ahead and meet now. And it'll ask me for a meeting name, I'll say a quick meeting, quick meeting, okay, and there I am, it's going to pop up, I'm the only person in the meeting right now, if I had other people online, I could show them, there's some really cool features, I'm just going to show you this because you're, you're looking at me, where I can go and blur my background because I don't want you to see my password on the board back there, and I can blur that out, these are really cool things, so if you're in a hotel room and you, you know, you want to have the meeting, but you don't want to see, have them see the rest of your room, <laughs> <laughs> Steve's laughing because he's been that been in this situation. So you want to see the rest of that stuff? Yeah, you can just blur it out. It's pretty cool. Let me stop that meeting from running and go back over to my channel. Do, 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 do. Stop. There we go. So in my channel, I can add many, many, many things to this channel. And so I have here a group here for my team, which is my SharePoint demo team. And I have like three or four of us are on the SharePoint demo team. So I invite all of them to this particular group and, and to this team. So now we all have access to the same thing. Inside of it, I set up channels, one for internal marketing, one for uh, the old intranet project that we're working on, uh, where it's disassembling the old intranet, and then also one for the Spin 23 channel for the new intranet. And so inside of that channel, inside of each of these channels, I could do this, but inside of that channel, I can go in and say, hey, I wanna add just a document library in here or just an Excel document or I want to leverage Microsoft Forms. So you're starting to see all the things that are in Office 365 come back to life inside of here, or OneNote, or I just want to have some PDFs inside of here, or I want to use Microsoft Planner to keep, keep track of tasks for people, or I want to put a, a, a Power BI dashboard that I have inside of this session. We have a PowerPoint presentation that we've been working on. Let's just pull that into this, present, into this team so we can all collaborate on just one PowerPoint presentation. Um, or I want to bring a whole SharePoint site or all the artifacts from a SharePoint site in, like all the libraries and all the lists from that. Um, or I wanna bring in some, some videos that we have from stream. Or if you are trying to figure out how do I get my entire SharePoint site to show up inside of here, then you could actually say, click on this website and you could add it inside of there and just add the URL to any website, internally or externally or SharePoint. Uh, and then it'll just show the whole website and just embed it inside of there, that's what I did. Wiki pages, Word documents, and then not just Microsoft stuff, it's all this other stuff too. Look at all of this, okay, that's huge. 
Microsoft doesn't care if you use Microsoft stuff anymore. They just they just want you to be happy. And so they're going to partner with everybody and to include multiple ways for you to collaborate. This this is what we're talking about. when We have that young generation that just got out of college and is used to using things like Slack. We have this older generation that's say old school SharePoint or even an older generation that that's, you know, hey, I'm, I barely work on a computer at all. I just want to be able to all of us to, to uh, uh, work together. You can even pull an email inside of here. It's just extraordinary. OK, so what I've done is I've set up the spin 23 site that I just showed you as just a link inside of here. It takes a couple seconds for it to show up, but it will. And then I can just enjoy the site right inside of Teams. So I don't necessarily have to navigate out to SharePoint to find it. I can just go to Teams. I can do our meeting. I can go inside and I can click on a link and see the entire site that's there. Click on all the links that are for there. I even put in the Spin23 project site inside of here as a separate link so I could get to it very easily. And so now I have that in here as well. And there's that chart that I showed you earlier. It takes a couple seconds to pull up and all the links that I showed you earlier sitting inside of here. So that's a way to kind of bring those two things together. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. So I know that we're at the end here. And let me just go back to a couple of slides so that anyone who has to go, um, you'll be able to get out of here on time. So our goal today was to talk about Office 365, which we did, talk about SharePoint, which we did, and we have a better understanding of those two things, and see how SharePoint makes a, a makes sense from the security point of view, IT point of view, and financial point of view. Hopefully, we hit all those points. Okay, um, you can contact us. Um, our website is ministrysharepoint.com. Um, the slides that you've just seen will be emailed to each one of you by Tara. Um, Tara's email address, if you uh, need to contact her, is tharms at spinistrytraining.com. My email address, if you want to contact me, is jedge at spinistry.com as well. Okay, so don't miss these next two webinars we have in the uh, improving your team's efficiency with Office 365 and SharePoint. We're going to dive into workflow in both realms. And then the SharePoint best practices, we'll talk about things that pertain to uh, SharePoint and how, why, how and why these best practices are there. OK, so I really appreciate everyone coming out to the webinar today. Yeah, so I, we have a couple of questions, but those who have to go, um, thank you for joining us. And I will try to answer the questions that we have uh, right now. Yep. Um, someone asks, is it possible to report on SharePoint data? It is absolutely possible to report on SharePoint data. Um, if you're using, um, uh, there are some tools that are built in SharePoint for this, but they're older. The, the way that we would have you do it now is uh, use Power BI. Power BI can access a SharePoint list or, uh, and, and pull the data from there and use it to you know, show beautiful charts and graphs and all those good things. Um, so the answer to that is absolutely yes. Plus, if you're a developer, so I'm not sure who, what, who's actually answer, asking this type of question or what, what your job title is. Um, so let me just answer, answer it one more way. If you are a developer, you can also connect to SharePoint through the, the SharePoint uh, list API. And so everything in SharePoint, all that data is available to you through the API. So you can create external applications or do any type of reporting that you wanted off of all the data inside of SharePoint. I think this one kind of goes with it. Are you using Power BI for the charts in your project page, or was that a feature built into SharePoint? <laughs> that is a great question. That is a great question. So the question, let me just so everybody understands it. Did I use Power BI to create that little chart that was uh, that little pie chart that was there? I did not use Power BI for that. Um, but you would. <laughs> uh, that chart that I that I put on there is really just for a project manager who wants to just put up some stats. It is not tied to um, that control is out of the box and that control has not grown up yet and it is not tied to any list or library you just go in and you you manually place in the figures and it creates the chart for you and it can be a pie chart or, or line charts or all those other types of things if you really want something robust you want to make sure you use power bi um, and it's too bad because i had a, a different example um, which i didn't plug into this one um, that had a power bi dashboard um, that i exposed um, and in, inside of Power BI, and I put it right on the home page um, so that you can see the full dashboard there with all of its charts and all of its glory. It was outstanding. Okay, the last question. Um, someone asks, um, I'm getting out of, uh, out of room message, delete or clean out inbox. How do I figure out how much space I have? Can I expand it? Is there a set amount? Um, so I'm going to assume if it's inbox, you're talking about um, uh, Exchange, so Outlook. 
Um, and so the amount of space that you have available is can be controlled by your IT department. So if you're if you're in the cloud, Office 365, um, I would just talk to your IT department. They can look to see how much they're giving you. I think like for for here at Spinistry, we gave everybody has like a gig of space or something like that. Um, uh, but they have the ability to say, no, we don't want everybody to have a gig of space and they make it smaller. So I, maybe you just have a conversation with them and they can, they can give you more. Because if you're running out of a gig, I'm just saying, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right. So I really appreciate everyone uh, attending today. Um, we look forward to seeing you at a future uh, webinar. Um, everybody have a great and awesome day.